Okay, so in the previous lecture, we spent uh, quite a bit of time in trying to understand uh, the various trends of uh, of proton and carbon NMR. So uh, now what we'll do is we will spend some time and try to understand the effects of uh, or the NMR pattern of benzene. So we will be spending uh, quite a bit of time on uh, on aromatic compounds in this uh, course, and therefore uh, it's quite useful. Okay, so. Just to recap, benzene, you know, basically is three pi bonds in a hexane ring, and uh, so the uh, orbital picture is going to look something like this, right? So you have basically p orbitals uh, which have uh, six pi electrons. So now the you know, to understand this, uh, yeah, you know, the picture, uh, let's now uh, look at the energy levels of, of benzene. So, you know, we have already seen that the molecular orbital uh, picture is going to look uh, something like this. So, here are the bonding orbitals and here are the antibonding uh, orbitals. And now if you uh, fill in electrons, so you have two, four and six electrons. And so these are... Uh, the uh, antibonding orbitals and these are the bonding orbitals, right? Now, so you have six pi electrons in the system and uh, they are delocalized, okay? So from a, an NMR standpoint, what uh, we want to understand is that when there is a magnetic field that is applied, so there is an, uh, there is an applied magnetic field, okay? So when this uh, magnetic field is applied, uh, magnetic fields are nothing but, uh, I mean, magnetic fields are, are uh, produced uh, by circulating electrons. So, uh, if you remember, uh, we had looked at the example of, uh, of hydrogen atom uh, and we found that, you know, there, is a, there are electrons that are going to be circulating and therefore there's going to be a magnetic field that is produced by the electrons, uh, which contributes to uh, the uh, shielding and deshielding, for example, okay. So, the greater the, the uh, shielding, the nucleus experiences less of the magnetic field okay so now in the case of benzene uh, it's very interesting because uh, benzene has uh, six pi electrons as we discussed it so what happens is that there is a these are the electrons that are going to be shown here okay so when the magnetic field is applied in these delocalized uh, electrons what happens is that it produces a local field okay so a local field magnetic field is established and this local field does two things okay so it does uh, the following things so basically uh, i'm not drawing out the hydrogens here but it's obvious that uh, there is a hydrogen and this local field basically is, is this is called as the the ring current as the name suggests it's a, it's a current that is produced in the aromatic ring and so this ring current uh, leads to a very peculiar situation where you have a local field that is going to be produced. Okay, so now in this local field is uh, what it does is that uh, it does two important things. One thing is that uh, it produces an additional layer for uh, you know for benzene, and uh, so what it does is that uh, inside the benzene ring the induced field opposes the magnetic field okay and outside the benzene ring the field reinforces the applied field okay so i'll repeat it so it does two things one is that it inside the benzene ring that is here inside the benzene ring it opposes the magnetic field so opposes magnetic field inside the benzene ring okay so this is what it does okay whereas outside the benzene ring what it does is it reinforces the applied field okay so in other words what happens is that you have a situation where the electrons are going to have two different effects on depending on where the hydrogen is placed okay so you may recall that when you compare 
the chemical shift value for an olefin so this hydrogens versus these hydrogens okay or any of those hydrogens the chemical shift value here is about 5.68 okay and whereas here it is 7.27 okay so this is a very significant difference that is between these two numbers is really significant it's huge okay so therefore this difference in aromatic ring is attributed to the ring current effect that is prevalent only in aromatic rings but what happens is that it's a very peculiar effect in that it only affects the the hydrogens so the carbon for example if i look at the chemical shift of this carbon it is 127.2 okay and whereas this carbon here the chemical shift value is 128.5 okay so if you see here uh, there's not really a whole lot of difference between 127 and 128 so the effect the ring current effect or the aromaticity uh, effect in benzene ring is localized or is it is primarily it affects the hydrogen atoms okay so that's very important to understand because the carbon 13 on the other hand is not affected okay so i'll repeat this so when the benzene ring uh, is placed in a magnetic field there is an induced magnetic field that is present that's and leads to what is known as a as a ring current and this ring current produces a local field and the local field you know it has a uneven effect the hydrogens that are inside or the groups that are inside the benzene ring you know lead to uh, opposition of the magnetic field whereas the ones that are outside lead to a reinforcement okay so therefore the outside values are more deshielded and they lead to a larger delta value let's look at some examples of various benzene ring containing compounds which are basically uh, substituted uh, benzene rings so uh, as we saw just for regular normal benzene uh, itself the chemical shift value is around 7.27 okay now what we are going to do is we are going to put in two nitro groups okay so these are and uh, we'll understand why we are doing this substitution a little bit later but you know these hydrogens for example when you look at the the chemical shift value of this this shows up at around 8.48 okay so how do we understand this the way we understand this is that if you draw out the nitro group such as as shown here okay so if you draw out the nitro group and if you pull these electrons over here this is going to form give rise to a resonance form where you have double bond n o minus o minus with a positive charge and this hydrogen here is going to be next to a electropositive no2 right so what happens is that because it's an electron withdrawing effect uh the electron withdrawing uh, group makes it uh, more deshielded okay so as you remember uh, from the previous uh, examples uh the uh, anything that uh, removes electrons from the nucleus uh, is going to lead to more deshielded so therefore nitrobenzene is more deshielded when compared with benzene all right now as we do a few more examples uh, these concepts will become uh, much clearer so now the next example we are going to take is cyanobenzene so cyanobenzene or benzonitrile as it's called c triple bond n c triple bond n okay so as you can see here this uh, triple bond is very nicely placed to pull electrons and so you can draw out a resonance form over here 
where so you have double bond C, double bond N, and then you have a negative charge here, and it leaves a full positive charge here, and the remaining molecule is the same. Okay, so what it does is again, this is an electron withdrawing group, and therefore the electron withdrawing group is going to make it more deshielded. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot to tell you the chemical shift value. So the chemical shift value is 8.10 okay so clearly the nitro has a stronger electron withdrawing uh, ability when compared to cyano and so and cyano has a slightly uh, lower value in comparison with the nitro group and the last example we're going to look at is this compound which has cf3 okay so cf3 uh, as uh, as you may know the fluorine is uh, is highly electronegative uh, there is no possibility of uh, a resonance based effect so this is going to be completely an inductive effect and the chemical shift value of this hydrogen here is uh, 7.8 7.78 okay so let me just uh, rewrite that the value is 7.78 okay so this value again is uh, much greater when compared to benzene so the cf3 definitely has a significant effect now let's move on to a couple of more examples in the halogen series so let's look at i'm just going to draw out the compounds as x and x so when x is fluorine then you can look at chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to list out the chemical shift value. Okay. So the value for uh, fluorine is 7.00. Okay. And that for chlorine is 7.24. Bromine is 7.32 and iodine is 7.40 okay so if i look at these three substituents it seems like uh, these values are are either for chlorine is comparable with that of benzene but bromine and iodine are definitely more uh, deshielded now when it comes to fluorine fluorine is very interesting because fluorine is the most electronegative atom but having lone pairs having three lone pairs fluorine can also donate electrons by resonance okay so it makes it a weakly electron donating group by resonance but a strongly electron withdrawing group by induction okay so therefore this balance leads to this kind of a shift here where fluorobenzene is actually going to have a lower chemical shift when compared with benzene we'll also look at this later when we are looking at uh, selectivity in uh, substitution reactions okay so uh, next let's move on to a few other substituents so the next substituent we're going to look at is uh, toluene okay or ch3ch3 in para positions so here uh, the value is 7.03 okay then I'm going to just draw out a general structure and then we'll look at the trend x x so this 7.03 is again can be rationalized because this uh, methyl group is weakly electron donating weak edg so that's going to lead it to a more shielded situation and uh, therefore the hydrogen is going to be coming at lower chemical shift values okay so now let's look at a few more examples and we'll then sort of wrap up this lecture. Okay, so the next uh, compounds that we're going to look at are basically again 1,4 substituted uh, just for simplicity. So I'm just going to call this as X and X. Okay, so the first example that we will look at is uh, X is and we're going to look at chemical shift x is methyl group so if there are two methyl groups 
at the 1 and 4 positions of benzene ring, the delta value is 7.03. Okay, so this value is again lower than that of uh, benzene, and uh, one can understand this by the weekly electron donating uh, effect of methyl group. The next example is OME, so that is OCH3. So OCH3 group, you know, the methyl group itself is electron donating, but there is an electronegative atom right next to it. So the what we would expect is that uh, there is going to be a little bit of, a, you know, the oxygen is going to dominate. But oxygen itself is very interesting because if you see the sort of situation with respect to oxygen is that you have a lone pair. So you have OCH3. Uh, so the electronegative atom is going to be pulling electrons, whereas the uh, oxygen being electronegative can also donate electrons. So there is going to be again, just like fluoro, there is going to be a balance between electronegative and electron withdrawing effect and electron donating eff effect. And here, uh, in this case, the electron donating effect dominates and therefore this becomes more shielded, 6.80. All right. The next example that we're going to look at is uh, phenol. So, when you look at phenol or 1,4 dihydroxy uh, benzene as shown here, uh, so what we're going to look at is the, you know, again, the, because of the oxygen, it can do two things it can uh, donate electrons and it can also pull electrons. So, when you look at OH at this position, the value is 6.59 okay so as discussed you know it uh, oxygen can donate electrons through resonance but withdraw electrons by induction and uh, the last example that we're going to look at is 1,4-diamino uh, benzene and here the value is 6.35 so clearly the electron donating effect of the nitrogen dominates so if I have to uh, uh, describe this, the effect of nitrogen is mainly by electron donation. Okay, So therefore, this becomes a very useful sort of guide for us to understand how uh, aromatic rings are being affected by both electron donating as well as electron withdrawing groups. And the nature of the group can determine whether it's an inductive effect or a resonance effect. And depending on the strength of it, the chemical shift can vary.